Hello everyone, this is Roxas1359, welcome back to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie! Uh, that's gonna take some time getting used to. Anyway, without further ado, let us play ourselves a new game! So, what we have inside of Banjo-Kazooie is we have three save files. If you ever want to change it, you just hit the X button to choose your storage. And if you ever want to delete a save, you just hit the right trigger on whatever game file you want to delete. So, what files do we have? Well, we have game one with... Banjo sleeping, eh, pretty standard. We have file two, where he's making something delicious, uh, with how his goldfish seems to react to that. I'm going to assume Banjo is cooking his mate. Banjo is a bear, after all. And on the third one, he's playing a game boy. Banjo, I thought we talked about this. You're owned by Microsoft now. That should be a Zune. So, let's go paradoxical, and let's start with game number three. So, let's start! And we start with a Snow White parody. Hmm. Oh, you stand out, all right. Oh, adventure ho, huh? That sounds like fun. It seems Banjo here has other ideas. You know, that fixed the looks department, but it doesn't fix the kindness department. Bottle, stop that! If you couldn't tell already, our main villain speaks in nothing but rhymes, and it is amazing. Ugh, that's expensive. Banjo could sleep through his house being blown up, I swear. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alright, Kazooie, I'm outside. I don't see anything. I'm going back to bed.
I can't sleep. Where's my sleep button? Oh, God damn it. Fine. Adventure ho. Alright, so, since this is started out with a parody of Snow White, I'm going to assume you are one of the seven mole dwarves. Ah, clumsy. It does zippy one-liners. Where'd she go? Well, the only other place that's in this entire valley. Or did you not notice that you live next to a witch? The realtor left that out. So, right here, we have an option, actually, to accept training or decline. This is something that is rather interesting and will actually affect something on Spiral Mountain right now. So, we're actually going to decline training because I can explain the controls a lot faster, believe me. Yes, give me my basic moves. Alright, so meet you at the top of Spiral Mountain. Gotcha! Which is the area in which we're in. But first things first, let's go over the controls. Since I'm playing on the Xbox 360 version, you'll know what I'm doing. Alright, so the left analog stick is used to move around. Use the right analog stick for the camera, which I can't show off right now because it's at a fixed camera angle. Okay, here we go. Which is something, another reason why I honestly chose the Xbox 360 version. I hate button cameras so much. I, uh, it really, N64 cameras have not aged well. Look at Mario 64 in its original incarnation. Oh my god. Oh, nope. Ow, ow. Stupid kazooie. Now, this isn't the only thing that you can do with the right analog stick. No, if you hit down, you can zoom out. And up, you can zoom in. You can go up to two times. Pretty much these are acting like the C buttons, only, you know, they're in stick form. A lot better. Alright, so now for basic controls as well we have the a button to jump the x button is going to be to attack there are three different types of attacks if you're standing still Benjo will do a swipe i will rarely use that if you're running and you hit the x button banjo will roll if you're in the air and hit x kazooie will peck and those are our basic attacks right now now there's another thing we can end up doing if you hold down the a button after you jump you can do a little glide with kazooie uh how kazooie is able to lift up a fat bear such as this one one does but we also have the crouching buttons which are the right and left triggers they're going to be used a lot more for a lot of other moves later on and that's pretty much it well one last thing if you hold the crouch button and jump you'll do a high jump that's pretty much all of our basic moves right now oh hi little carrot oh it looks delicious looks like a honeycomb piece sticky tasty honey energy yep Honey energy is our energy in this game, which pretty much, we lose it all, we lose a life. So, right now we can take up to four hits, and otherwise we'll die. That little number that's right next to a very happy-looking Banjo and Kazooie are our lives. Now, the life system is a little bit different inside this game, and how it counts it. Unfortunately, just like how a lot of N64 games were, lives do not carry over. So, if you end up turning off the game or resetting the game, then your life count will reset back to three. Um, that's something that was also not fixed for this one. It's not too bad because really dying in this game is not too much of a problem. Now, the odd thing that I was mentioning beforehand is that Banjo-Kazooie only counts until 9, but in fact, you could actually get more lives than 9. It just won't count higher than 9. It's basically like a Sonic 3D Blast in that case for anyone who's played that game. But since I ended up skipping the bottles tutorial, you might notice the mole hills around here. That would have been to, you know, do our tutorials for us. So, if you go near them and you press the X button, since I decided to decline them, Bottles gets snippy with you. 
Now, which one's the one? I'm still not helping you, so go away. Yep. Someone's snippy. Ooh, what's this? Mmm, giant cotton ball flying. Let's kill it. Ooh, what's this? An extra honeycomb piece. Yep. So, extra honeycomb pieces are used to increase your life gauge. There will be a maximum of two per stage normally. Inside Spiral Hill right there, there is actually a full six, so we'll actually be able to get an entirely new little honeycomb added to our bar. Now, whenever you end up getting a new honeycomb piece on your health bar, it will automatically fill up your health again. Another purpose of the bottle mole hills, in case you ever need it, is if you end up getting hit and you talk to bottles, then he will actually refill it. Usually. If I'm remembering correctly, or that might only apply whenever you're learning moves. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we're not done learning moves and clipping. I hate clipping! God, I hate clipping. I guess I can't expect too much since this is a port of an N64 game, but still, I hate clipping. But, either way, let's continue on around Spiral Mountain. Uh, actually, there is a... No, I'm going to save that one for last. Let's go up over this way instead by the waterfall. Uh, giant sentient carrot. Die, I will use you in a stew later. And we have another honeycomb piece over there, but there's also a waterfall. And you know the rule of gaming. Always look behind the waterfall. So, that's number three. And back here is a trophy life. So, pretty much these are what will give us our lives. These actually respawn, if I remember correctly. And I know they respawn for sure when you reset the game. So, really, you have no problem in collecting lives if you know where the statues are. You can't collect lives if you were to, like, I don't know, collect a hundred honeycombs. Sort of like how a lot of other platformers actually at the time did it. But let's keep getting these honeycomb pieces because I need them badly. So, going up. There we go. That is number four. So now we need to get number five and number six. And then we will make our way to the top of Spiral Mountain. So, where is number five? It is up this tree. Climb the tree. Because we are a bear. There we go. That's number five. And the last one is going to be underwater, which we can actually swim in. So, water controls, what are they? X button will allow you to dive underground if you keep hitting the X button. Kazooie will flap her wings. Pretty much this is your best method of swimming underwater. If you want to go slowly and turn, just hit the A button and Banjo will kick. You have an air meter that's right there. And unlike Super Mario 64, when you surface, you do not regain your health if you end up taking damage. That was always something I found odd in Super Mario 64. I think that one might have been an oversight by them. But here we go. And there you go. Adds another one there. I always love that little jingle. I love a lot of the music in this game, but I'll get more into that later. But for right now, Bottles told us to wait and get to the top of Spiral Mountain, so we should probably, you know, go up there. He's probably wondering where we are, seeing as how I didn't need basic training and everything. Well, I really don't. This game is really easy to pick up, be it on the N64 or on the Xbox Live Arcade, so pretty accessible, which is great. So... Hello, Bottles. Sure, can we just go to straight to the top of the tower? Alright, thanks! Now, if you actually chose to do the training and you've actually not gone to all the mole hills that are around Spiral Mountain, you will actually not be able to access Grunty's Lair because some of the planks on this bridge will be missing and Bottles will end up giving you all the planks once you've learned all the moves. So, I think we should now go into our main hub of the game, say goodbye to Spiral Mountain. We're pretty much not going to be coming back here until the end of the game, actually, and I mean the very end, as in finale. So, let's go on inside. I love the rhyming.
Uh oh. Looks like our sister's in danger. How are you talking in the machine? All right, so welcome to Gruntilda's Lair, the hub of this game. Pretty much throughout this lair, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through different levels and getting to the top. So I say screw that, let's just go to the top. No, <sighs> that incline's too steep. Well, I'm sure we can find something over here. Oh, well, there's, a, there's a door over here. What is this? Can I break it? Yeah, you really are short-sighted, Bottles. It's right here. So yes, here is the jigsaw puzzle, but we don't have any jigsaw pieces. I'm gonna speed up this text. You can p speed it up with the A button. One of the things I really hate about this game is the text speed can be a tad slow. Now, the whole reason why I'm showing this, I could have just gone straight and obtained the jigsaw piece, otherwise known as a jiggy, but I would have missed out on those text-based scenes, which I never see. I actually didn't know about them until my practice file. But up there is a shiny gold jigsaw piece. Sweet! Hi, Mr. Jiggy. Sure. Sweet! Gonna make it rich and goddammit, Kazooie! <sighs> great, now I gotta do the Heimlich on the bird just to get my puzzle piece back. Oh, great. Alright, so what we do is we go over this way and we go to our puzzle. Stand on the switch. Which I will never be doing. Hey! Just because my save file is me playing a Game Boy doesn't make me a geek. Now my gaming collection does. So, let's open up the first level. And it is... Mumbo's Mountain. Uh, I don't think it will. But anyway, guys, I'm actually going to end it off right here. This has been Roxas1359. We're going to be entering Mumbo's Mountain in the next part. But one thing that is actually interesting is the game over screen, which I will be showing you right now because otherwise I will never actually, you know, die. I've never gotten a game over in this game and I don't plan on starting. So anytime you end up going to the exit game option on this version, you will get the game over screen. So I'm going to let the game over screen play off and I'll see you guys next time. Oh God, she's hot!